How is that even possible? Whoa! Stephen J. Partner goes, show some respect. You did not answer the question. He's a bad man. He's a bad man. He's a bad. He finally said it. The slip was gone. The dress has holes in it. The car turned into a pumpkin again. So what else you gonna I do? I guess this team couldn't cover a twin mattress with a king size. Lights out, season. Lights out for you. <laughs> let's try, let's get as quick into the game as possible because I am not staying in this wig longer than I have to. I want to play it out, bro. So I'm talking this game. What's going on, people? I'm excited here. Opening day, UFL. Way to get it started. I'm so hyped and ready to go. I mean, anytime we're able to sit at this table and do real tough talk again, it's always exciting, especially the first week. The funny thing is, I'm not even a player, and I get the jitters for the first week. You know, you can't wait. You get anxious to, you know, see what's going on, talk about the team, see, you know, see everybody in action. Um, and it's an, and it's, a, it's an exciting day to cover football again. And I'm a former player. <clears throat> And I remember I couldn't wait for these days because you know that football was starting. You was hyped to get it moving, hyped to see the competition, and just hyped about everything. And speaking of hype, you know, usually we'll be starting with the first game of the day, but we got something even bigger than that. <clears throat> A little under the weather. Mm -hmm. But this man wasn't. Right now, we got breaking news. Team X, led and owned by Doughboy, has confirmed that they have signed EHS current champion, mm -hmm. starting quarterback of the U, Akon. Let me get this straight. The same Akon that helped IOD in this league last year Correct. win, well, last season, win a UFL championship. That same icon, um, icon that played huge and got them through the, um, the final four with that last score. I remember the game like it was yesterday. That man, the key, one of the key parts that helped IOD win a championship, leaves and goes to play with um, Team X. Yeah. Is that what you're saying? Doughboy confirmed it with me. He let me know Akon will be a starting quarterback. And we are talking about Akon, the defender. You're talking about Akon. The receiver. Yes. I'm talking about Acom, the quarterback. Yes. The man who just won a tournament EHS um, 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 in City Island. Yes. And then he now just won EHS championship versus YMM. That Acom started quarterback. What you think this does for Team X right I out mean, the gate? I mean, first of all, the, the, the same Acom that ended YMM's reign in EHS. As three-time champs, you, you correct. Got, you got you to gotta say that, yeah. you know? This is a big deal. For this Team X team. That shows that they're out there looking for a champion to win. They, are, they mean business. They're not coming in to just play. They're not coming in to just have fun. They're coming in to win. And I respect that wholeheartedly to the point where it gets me excited to see these, these guys on the field. Yeah, I mean, listen, at the end of the day, you know, he helped IOD win a chip. But I think he felt, you know, after... They won the tournament. You know, they went into EHS with Adi, who's quarterback of IOD, starting quarterback with this U team as they brought the U and underrated together. They lost that game mm. to go to the chip. Hopefully, I'm, I'm, I'm remembering right. Akon never got put in the game. We seen him go, we seen Swiss go away from Izzy to bring in Eddie. We seen him bench Eddie to go with Akon. In that tournament, which Akon, you know, ended up winning the tournament. You know, um, bottom line, bottom line, I like the move. It's a big pickup. But that's not all. I also heard rumors, and I'm waiting to confirm this, that he's possibly picked up hustlers J. Will and Ta. Also, two guys that's going to be with him, as well as go with the UFL All-Star from Violators, Ralph. Mm. who was already a core guy on, on, on Doughboy's roster. That's three A players. Remember, Akon, as long as because he's a starting quarterback, he does not get labeled as an A player. Mm. So that still gives Doughboy room for two more max contracts. And you know what? 
that's a GM move right there. If I have, if I can ever call that 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 one, because again, you're analyzing how much space you have, um, pulling in somebody like Akon that can be the leader of your team, the core of your team as quarterback, a person who's already has a winning formula put together, and putting all these other pieces together. You can't argue with the with the GM moves with this team. You can't argue at all. Doughboy making moves. Team X showing that they're serious. They're trying to compete. They're trying to be one of the top teams in the league. And hopefully this formula that looks good on paper um, comes through as soon as they step on the field. I'm excited. He told me he's going for that quarterback. I mean, that coach, captain of the year. And that's also part of being a GM also. All yes. that is included into one thing. And as you can see right now in the West, the West in conference is a driven quarterback conference. You got Lou from Grind Time. You have Chuck from Carver. You have Fred from Never Scared. You have Chris from Horrible Humans. We're still waiting to confirm who's the starting quarterback of LES. Mm -hmm. But you got A-Rod and JJ. A-Rod took LES to the championship in the A division, yeah, in BQFL, and JJ, we've seen this guy develop as a very decent and now a good quarterback. So in the West, is a driven quarterback. So um, conference. So he knew he had to go get a quarterback. And to top it off with Akon leading the troops, it doesn't get better than that. And the thing that this guy can do at quarterback is very dangerous for a lot of teams. Not only does he have a cannon for an arm, but this guy can take off at any given moment and, you know, um, and give defenses a very hard time out there. So it's very hard to contain a quarterback like Akon that has all the pieces that he needs to keep the ball moving on offense. So big pickup for Team X. This is a guy that you need as a core for your team. Especially on offense, when you know you need a quarterback, great move getting it. And before we wrap this up, you know what I like to do? You know I like to go NFL uh -huh. when it comes to quarterbacks. Uh -huh. It's hard to do it with other players, but the quarterback position is something I go at. And you know who Akon remind me of at quarterback? Who? Donovan McNabb. Mm. Strong arm, accurate, can run, and has size. Definitely. And, you know, a lot of people would say Cam Newton. Yeah. I don't say Cam Newton because a Cam Newton is more of he's still learning to mature. He's yeah. still learning to be a leader. Akon's already a leader. Yeah. He's already mature. He has a big body. He can run the football, and he shows the ability to buy time in the pocket yeah. while he's throwing the ball downfield. That's why I think he's more of a Donovan McNabb as far as being a general in that offense. So we're going to have to see. We'll wrap up this segment. I just had to let you. You know, we had to. we let this off before a game. Yeah. Then it had to be some huge. So you heard it here first. It was people who had heard the things, you know, it was a little thing going on. But now it's been confirmed. Akon, starting quarterback of the U, the current EHS champions that ended Wyman three championship game, three championship streak, is now the starting quarterback of Team X. Wow. We're going to be right back. We're going to take our first break. Real Tough Talk. We'll be back. All right, welcome back. Stephen Jay, my partner Ghost, we're excited to bring back Real Tough Talk. This is the first game of the UFL season. Never scared versus horrible humans. Fred, who I like to call Big Ben, versus Chris, who I like to call Marcus Mariota. Okay. Two good quarterbacks. Definitely should be a firefight coming out now. And the thing that I know about these two quarterbacks is Fred is, even though he's able to chop the field up every now and then, one thing I can say about Fred that I know from the very beginning, the first time I saw him, he is a downfield guy. He has one of the best deep passes as a quarterback that I've seen in a long time. When he is on, when he is in rhythm, he is dangerous. Last season, we saw that with him scoring 19 touchdowns last season, second only to Reggie, yep. who... Scored more than any other team. Yep. So, just just saying that for a team that didn't have as many stars as some other teams, but he was able to put up the numbers anyway, that shows the talent that Fred has as quarterback. And on the other side, you have Chris. Definitely a great running quarterback. Still getting into his own in UFL, learning the passing game. Mm -hmm. You know, he had nine touchdowns, seven uh, interceptions, kind of high interceptions, 
nine touchdown passes, not the best in the world, but I think it's a good season, your first season. And But the big matchup is the reigning UFL most improved player versus the runner-up um, UFL most improved player, yeah. Chris versus Sean. They played together in the All-Star team, both of them re representing their respective teams, and both of them did damage in that All-Star game. You know, on my side, even though we came up short, they both did their thing, so I'm glad for that. But now these dudes get a chance to face each other. They know who each other are. They know what, what each other can do, and they, you're going to see them facing off directly because they know that they have to lock each other down. And they're both wearing a UFO All-Star hat. Yes. That's amazing to see. We're going to jump right into the game. Chris on first down, throws deep to a wide open cycle in the middle for a huge game, picking up the first down. If you look here, the safeties are not communicating, and I like this guy's cycle. I've seen his games. The guy plays with a lot of energy, but he has a lot of talent to back that up. If you see this play here, you look at Boyd at safety, you look at Just here. Just is not following the, si the um, sideline, not guarding this receiver here. So Boyd at safety is going to pick him up. Because of that, Psycho runs right through the middle, right where Boyd you know, um, no, would normally be. And he has a free release for that big game right there. A few plays later, Chris at the three-yard line finds Psycho in front of the end zone. But a touchdown. Psycho gets the extra point. Seven nothing. Harbor Humans take the lead. I mean, on that last play, that was the key play right there that got them to that score. One play, first down, Chris, fearless, um, looking at the defense and seeing this guy wide open. I like that mentality, knowing that, listen, he's confident in his game. He got his guy here, and he's going to find him. He got more weapons this time around. Never scared gets the ball after a short pass for the first down. Fred with three passes to J.O. in the gap. But nice games to get him to the seven-yard line. I like J.O. He's a big target, got good hands, and that's exactly what Fred needs. Somebody in the middle of the field while you got Sean opening it up. Great play by J.O. Fourth and goal. Fred throws to John, cutting in front of the end zone. It's going to be dropped, but caught by Chino in the back of the end zone. But a touchdown. Harvey Humans believe Chino stepped out. What do you think? I mean, let's just hypothetically say that he did step out. What do we see happen before he stepped out, if he did? John touched the ball already. Yeah. So even if he did step out of bounds, it doesn't matter. He is an eligible receiver again. Because he's not the first person to touch the exactly. ball. Exactly. So he's able to um, clean up and get that catch for the touchdown. Great way for Chino to be aware and stick with the ball. JL gets the extra point, 7-7. Seven, seven. They tie it right back up. Harvey Humans get the ball. Second down, after a short pass to Cycle, Chris on four rush runs in the gap for a big gain in the first down. This is what Chris does. Besides Ramsey, I think he's the best running quarterback in this league. Great run by him. And he doesn't hesitate. As soon as he sees the lane, he takes off. He has moves, dodges certain guys, come going in for the tag. This guy is dangerous, especially when he has open field to run, because this can happen at any moment. Second down, Chris throws deep to Eddie in the middle. Overthrow, incomplete. Third down, Chris on four rush with pressure from Jody. Throws it away, incomplete. Harvey humans have to punt. I like that pressure by Jody. Keeping Chris in the pocket, not allowing Chris to escape because you just seen what he did before. Great stop by that defense. And the thing about it is this is a way that you read the quarterback knowing that he can run. You help the giver because the giver by himself has at least one blocker on him. Jody comes in to help, keeps the pressure on Chris, makes him throw away that pass. Great defense there. Third down after a short pass to J.O. Fred on four rush is sacked by Cat. Never scared to have to punt. I like this guy, Cat. He's a strong legs guy. You know what I mean? I like the way he plants his legs and his ability to be able to get by blockers, and he makes a huge sack here. I like this guy. Big sack. Never scared has to punt. First down, Chris on four rush with nice blocker from Cap. Runs in the gap for a nice game, picking up the first down. Chris is dangerous on the run. If you give him time with blocking, the guy can move it with his feet. Chris then with blocker from Cap. Throws a cycle on the sideline for a decent game. Second down, Chris. Throws to Eddie in the middle to get them to the four-yard line. Third down, Chris throws a cycle, cutting in the corner of the end zone. That one is going to be dropped. Last play before half, Chris with blocker from Cap. Rolls left, throws to Chris, cutting in the back of the end zone. Chris with a great diving catch for the touchdown. Eddie gets the extra point, 14-7, going into the half. And the thing about this play right here is you see Chris cutting back back and forth in the back of the end zone. Sean is guarding. Yeah, let's block everything out. Block yeah. everything out. Let's see the matchup here. The thing right here, you see Sean with him. You see Chris cutting in. 
You see him cutting out, cut back in again. Sean is right there. But the thing about Chris is he gets in position with his roll out here and he gets right, he makes the throw right where only Chris can get to it. Chris the receiver, by the way. And he makes a diving catch. Nothing Sean could do about it. And Chris makes that great catch for a touchdown. CNC connection. I like these guys. They did it all last year and they're bringing it right back to the season doing it. That's going to take us into the half. 14 7, Harbor Humans. And right now, um, Harbor Humans has the edge in this game. It seems like Chris is doing whatever he has to, and it's working. Whenever he's um, he gets stopped, he's not able to throw the ball. He takes off in his run, keeps the drive moving, and because of that, they were able to score twice here. So everybody's contributing, and one thing I got to say is I like this guy's cycle. He is another receiver that adds to their receiver core. They didn't have him last year when they were playing, with, um, when they were playing as Dutchman. Um, you see here... Chris saying he has help this time. Yeah, what is that about? Help. You heard? Help. He has help. That's exactly what he said. He has other guys stepping up that they can contribute on offense. And because of that, their offense is that much stronger. And they show it here with this 14-7 lead. Never scared. Fred has to get Sean involved. Sean was his Antonio Brown to his big bet. Got to get Sean involved in the offense. Got to find a way to involve him in this passing game if you want to make plays. We've seen John come up with a big drop that Chino was able to catch for the touchdown, which yeah. is a great play. But John was brought in from 99 problems to make catches. They need him and J.O. to continue to destroy the middle in order for them to open up the outsides. Defensively, they got to keep Chris in the pocket. Once this guy escapes... It's nothing but danger and green field you're going to see. Hmm. Got to be able to slow down his running game. If you could do that, he tends to make mistakes if you take his confidence away from running the ball. We're going to jump right into the second half. Fred with a pass to John in the middle for a decent game, getting him the first down. Then Fred with a deep pass to Sean, wide open in the end zone for the touchdown. If you look here, Psycho and Dirk pass him off to each other, but nobody picks him up. Jail with the extra point. 14-14 tie game. And the funny thing is, they both see him. They see him there, but nobody reacts. It's like one guy is waiting for the other guy to react. Somebody got to pick him up. And because nobody reacts, leaves Sean, the guy with the all-star jersey that Chris was yelling yeah, about. Yeah, I love that. I love the way Chris, and I, I love this game. Because you got Chris yeah, one yeah, yeah. quarterback. quarterback yeah. So I'm going to call him C2. C2? He's going to yell out, that guy's wearing an all-star shirt for a reason. We got to respect him. And they didn't, and he made him pay for it. Yeah. Chris throws to Eddie in the middle for a decent game, picking up the first down. Chris sent on four rush, rush to the sideline. The give is going to fall. Rara's going to miss the tag, and Chris runs for another big game. That's Chris's third huge game, and this guy can run the football. You gotta respect his feet. I mean, you nobody got the memo already? Like, after two runs, you need to follow, find a way to keep him in the pocket. They don't do that. Chris is able to get by. First of all, great, good blocking by Cat, by the way, keeping yeah. him protected and giving him the ability to run. And all out of that, as soon as he gets open field, he makes some moves and gets big game there. Third down, Chris on four rush, scrambles and throws the Frank in the gap. With Conta from Chino, pass is incomplete. Last play, Chris throws it up to Chris in the back of the end zone, knocked away by Just, turnover and downs. And the Harbor Humans wanted to pass in the first. Yeah. Me coming as an official, that is a tough call. The ball was kind of underthrown, mm -hmm. and Chris is trying to make a play, but it looks like Just is attacking the ball. Yeah. And Chris didn't seem like he was really attacking the ball. He was kind of waiting for it to come down. So I think that's a tough call, but I think it's a yeah. good no call by the, the ref. The thing about it is, based on what you said, if Chris is already stationary, he's there, and the other guy is leaping to get the ball, he's going to collide with you. So it's not like you're running and he, he impedes on you getting the ball. Correct. Um, if you're stationary, he's going to collide with you. It's going to be a hard sell for a ref to Especially throw that flag. Especially when it looked like a jump ball. Yes. And the thing is, Chris didn't even jump for it. It right. looked like he reached, not knowing that a defender was coming. And because of that, they collide. And the, the, um, the ref is going to be hard to, um, it's not going to be, it's going to be hesitant to throw that flag. And that's always incomplete. Right now, remember, the score right now is 14-14. Fred throws a Ouija in the middle for a decent game. Second down, Fred throws short to Eric 
who pitches to Jay on the sideline for a nice game, picking up the first down. I like that. The team is getting creative, mm -hmm. trying to find a way to move the ball. Front on four rush with blocker from Eric. It's sacked by Cap. Cap with a big sack. I like this dude. Definitely impacting this game. Second down, Fred is blitzed by Jesse. Those are Julio running the sideline. That pass is dropped. Julio has to make these catches. He is known as a 50-50 guy, which is something you never want. He has to be able to make these catches. I've seen him drop. I've seen him catch some, but I've seen him drop some. Got to find a way to make it. Big drop by him. Last time, Fred throws it up. Picked off by Mike. Harbor humans get the ball at the 10, and Mike has to knock this ball away because it would have been further down the field. Fred throw it up like a punt, and they start at the 10. Harbor humans get the ball. Remember, the game is tied, 14-14. Second down, Chris throws deep to cycle. Was guarded by Rara in the gap. Picked off by Sean. Giving it right back to never scared. And this is the issue that I have with Chris. Let's look at this play. Rara has Psycho blocked up. If you look here, everybody's covered. Mm -hmm. They leave two men at the line to put pressure on Chris to stop Chris from running. But if you look here, Cap had a little block here. And look at the left. Wide open for a run. The one time Chris should run, he doesn't. <laughs> Forces a pass, That's picked crazy. off by Sean, league's um, um, most improved player, and was up there for MVP. Yeah. You gotta respect this man, he already caught a touchdown, now he got a pick, bad mistake by Chris. Great defense by Never Scared, it's funny that we don't normally say that, but they step up here with a good defense, and that's why they end up getting the interception. Third down, Fred throws the jail in the middle for a decent game at the 15 yard line. Last down, Fred with blocking from Eric, finds J.O. cutting in front of the end zone for the touchdown. If you look here, Nobody's gone in the front. J.O. gets the extra point, 21-14. And you hear Chris yelling, saying that J.O. got like 18 catches. <laughs> He's frustrated. J.O. is playing great. And the main thing before you talk, Eric, I like this guy's blocking. Way to hold it down for Fred. Gives him extra time. And when you do that with Fred, he's going to find somebody. J.O. has been killing all game. We didn't show every play that he was involved in. But he had every single extra point in this game. They could not lock this man up. He is a big target. He's able to get open in the gaps. And right here, he sees the open in the front of the end zone. Nobody on the defense picks it up. That's one-on-one -on -one defense at a goal line. You never leave the front open. That's exactly what they do. And J.O.'s there for the easy touchdown. 21-14, never scared. Second down, Chris throws a Chris on the sideline. Can't hold on to it, incomplete. Third down, Chris throws a Sean. Cutting in the gap for a nice game, picking up the first down. I like the way Chris is spreading out the ball, finds another receiver here. Chris throws to Eddie, open on the sideline, off target, incomplete. Second down, Chris throws deep to Cycle, one on one rock. Cycle with the catch in the end zone for the touchdown, 21 20, but there's a flag. Mm -hmm. The ref said that Cycle was holding Ra Ra. Mm -hmm. The refs come together. We talk about it, the call is overturned, and the touchdown stands. What do you think of the play? Well, you got to look at the whole play to understand exactly what happened. Um, of course, Never Scared was livid with the, that the flag was picked up. But if you look at the whole play, both of them extends an, a hand to, to, you know, to fight for, for position. You see Ra extend the hand. You see um, Psycho extends his hand back to knock it down. It seems like they get locked up with each other as they're fighting for position. But one thing I gotta say is, regardless of all of that happening, Chris with the beautiful throw. Yes, that's a Only dime. Psycho can get Hopefully, this Hopefully, that should be on Dawn's dimes. Yeah. I know she's not gonna be in the show as consistently, yeah. but we're gonna get a final way about dimes, because that is an ill dime. And the thing about it is, again, two throws where Chris puts it only where his receiver can get it, and Psycho's able to make a play. I like this guy, Psycho. Um, big big time offensive play on this team already making noise gets by gets by Ra Ra and is able to score for the touchdown 21 20 they're gonna go for two Chris is gonna scramble with two blockers find Sean in the corner of the end zone Ra Ra leads the corner and boy can't get there in time 22 21 Harbor humans and one thing I gotta say is, I say it, there's, there's certain things that you gotta remember when you play goal line. First of all, don't play zone. That's exactly, I mean, don't play um, man to man. That's what they did here. Ra Ra following his receiver, 
does the worst thing you can do at goal line, leaves the sideline, leaves the corner of the end zone, and because of that, Sean is able to cut right there, and Chris, again, puts it right where only Sean can get it. Boyd can't react in time. That's not his um, his area, uh, and they end up scoring and taking the lead on this play. 22-21, Harbor Humans. Racing against the clock. Fred throws it just in the gap for a nice game, pick up the first down. Fred then gets blitzed by Jesse. Runs in the gap, nice game, call times out, timeout. That is a great run by Fred. That's why I call him Big Ben. Not only the ability to throw the ball downfield, but for a big guy, pause. <laughs> he can run the football, and that's a great run by Fred. And the thing is, people underestimate how fast Fred is for his size. He can take off at any given moment. He showed it last season. He showed it again this season with this play right here, taking off a big game. You would think that everything else is all is, is um is shut down except Fred's running lane and he takes it, um, keeps the drive going with a few seconds left on this play. Last play of the game. Six seconds on the clock. Fred with blocker from Eric. Throws a wheezy wide open in the back of the end zone for the touchdown. 27-22. Walk-off touchdown pass by Fred. And tell me, how did Ouija get open? Please tell me. Now, I need to know. This guy was by himself. He could do his taxes. Mm. He could have called his girl. He could have broke up with his girl. And then got back with her before the football got there. Please tell me what happened. And I'm going to say this. If you look at this play here, if you look at the camera angle, as the quarterback is rolling out or whatever, you do not see Ouija in this play at all up until the very end. Why is that? Because he hangs back on the sideline up until the very last minute and none of the defenders see him there. Because of that, he's able to creep on the sideline into the corner of the end zone. Fred sees him, throws it right there. Nobody sees him but Fred and he's able to connect with that touchdown. It seems like that play was set up for this very moment and they take advantage of horrible humans not paying attention on the sideline. 27-22, never scared with the win. If I'm never scared, I'll take the win. Of course, what are you going to do? Give it back? Yeah. Love it. Won a big game. Opening day. Definitely showed some key players. J.O. helping the offense. Sean doing what Sean usually does. Ouija getting involved. Always ha good to have Ouija as long as he can stay healthy. Mm -hmm. healthy. J.O. dominated the middle of the field. Just great plays offensively. Ouija getting involved in the offense. I like these players. But two things concern me. You know I'm a coach. Mm -hmm. So I'm never going to accept something in a win that I wasn't in a loss. Fred threw four touchdown passes. No interceptions. Fred threw, put the same thing up last season opening day. He put up 26 points. Fred was number two in scoring. This, this never scared offense. Mm -hmm. The defense had one pick, his defense, and they only gave up 13 points. They beat the Wolverines and lose the first and only game in UFL last season. This year, Fred once again, four touchdowns. This time he put up 27 points. The defense did have one interception to help him, but they gave up 22 points. The worst defense in the league gave up more points than they did last year opening day. You know how many sacks they had? None. They could not sack Chris. This is not going to work unless they think they're going to try to outscore everybody and pray Fred doesn't have a good game. They're in trouble. They made a stop when they had to. Give them that. But Chris made two bad plays. The ball that he threw in the back of the end zone to the other Chris that got knocked away, that was kind of hanging, and the interception he threw right after they made a stop. Yeah. Other than that, he lit this team up. You cannot be a great team if you're giving up 22 points. I love their offense. Their defense needs work. Now, I heard they picked up Smoke. Smoke is back. He's going to help them bring pressure to the quarterback. But this team has to figure out what identity they're going to have. And as well as they just picked up smoke, boy quit. Mm. Big acquisition they picked up in the offseason, he's gone. 
he was kind of upset the whole game. Didn't like the fact that he wasn't playing a lot of offense. He feels like he's a two sides of the ball type player. He quits the team. So now they're going to have to figure out what they're going to do to replace him. Because like him or not, this kid can make plays, both sides of the ball. Yeah. And they lose him. I don't want to take away too much for the win because I know you're going to talk about horrible humans. But at the end of the day, this is a good win, but they have things that they have to fix. Because I'm hearing, you know, we just we just talked about Team X. You know, grind time could put up points. Yeah. Raiders going to be able to put up points. Cover Mob is going to put up points. This team is going to have to be able to make stops, and they don't look like they could do it right now. And if I talk about, if I'm going to talk about the Harbor Humans, you know, this was a game that they gave away. This is a game that they had in their hands, and they gave away in the very last drive. There was a couple of plays during the game that they could have sealed the game away, and they didn't. They didn't put this game away. But one thing I got to say is their secondary is, and I'm going to borrow your word, atrocious. There's no other word that I can use for their secondary. And I'm pretty sure Chris, you know, let them hear it throughout the game for that very same reason. Their secondary, you know, if I'm going to say, if I'm not going to say anything worse, they need a lot of work. Yep. You know, their offense, I'm fully confident in their offense. They, they have a good offense so far. I don't know if I saw everything yet. I don't know if I've seen enough yet to say, oh, my God, this offense is the greatest. Right. Not yet. Not as impressed as I could be. But they they, they got the job done. Their defense is what killed them this game. Probably the more dangerous guy is the guy that they could not hold and could not stop, which was J.O. Correct. J.O. did everything that he wanted to do in this game. I don't even believe that every pa- any pass that was thrown to J.O. was made. And half of them was point was point scored by it, so that's that's not gonna work. If you have one guy like that killing you the whole game and you can't adjust, you're not gonna win. And every team in this league has at least one guy that can do that. Yep. So if you can't lock up or find a way to keep this guy from doing whatever he wants, you're not gonna win. So I mean, I, mm-hmm. and to piggyback off what you said, they're in the Western Conference. Grand time got Yomi. Team X I have a Ralph. Carver I have a Boo Boo. I mean, LES, I mean, we still gotta see who they bringing, mm-hmm. but you know, there's no telling who they bring. You guys are gonna attack the middle to open up the outside. Mm-hmm. And if you cannot adjust and stop that middle, your secondary will be exposed. It's exactly what happened today. Mm-hmm. There's not much that could And they lost the game with six seconds on the clock. Yes. Six. Second First of all, on oh, oh, the clock. listen, you cut me off when I was gonna make my oh, I'm, when I was gonna mention this because this is a horrible way to let them walk off on you. Yep. First of all, what is your defense doing that there's one guy creeping on the sideline and you do not see him with six seconds on the clock? With six no. seconds, so there's somebody on your defense not guarding anybody. Yep. He needs to find. First of all, you see this guy right here leaves the sideline. To follow and pick up and lock up on a receiver. You stay in position on a play like that. If it's going to be a toss-up play or whatever, you do not leave position to look for a receiver to guard up. You stay there. Let the receiver come to you. He leaves that sideline. Because he leaves that sideline, he does not see Ouija creeping up on that very yep. same sideline. And he's left wide open for this last play. You stay in position. You lock up on this guy, you're probably able to make a play on this play, you walk away with a win. So these are things that they got to fix because if they struggle on defense the way they did in this game, they are not going to win. It's going to be an uphill battle from here on if they don't fix these problems. I um, But they, they definitely did their thing. Danny had two touchdowns. Chris had one. You know, the offense looked good. You know what I mean? They got to make some moves defensively if they want to compete. Well, we're going to wrap this one up. Never Scared comes away with the win. 22, 27-22, they lose Boy in the process. Got to see where Boy is going to go. And and I, I had talked to him, and he actually showed me that it's coming down to the decision who he's going to play with comes down to three teams, UTF, Team X, or Grind Time. All three teams could use this, man. But we'll see what happens. Never scared with the big win over Harbor Humans, 27-22. We'll be right back. Real tough to him. What's going on? Next segment, Tough Talk. 
Welcome back. And before we get into anything, let's talk about the holidays because this is going to be the last show that we have before Christmas. Mm-hmm. Uh, tell me what's one thing you usually do every Christmas that you would like to share with us, I mean, as long as it's not too weird. I mean, what's so weird about what I'm going to say? It's a common thing. The main thing that I do is make sure that I spend time um, with the kids and my family. You right. Know? Like, that's always a, a joy of mine to hang out with them. A lot of them are away for school this year. But, you know, they come around for the holidays, you know, hang out with them, you know, kind of, you know, talk about school, kind of, you know, do some fun things, watch movies together, things that, you know, they grew up doing around me. I want to keep that tradition going. So that's one of the joys that I have with um with the holidays because I can do it all over again every year. That's very political. And um, political. We, 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 that's a political answer. You know, you sound like you're about to run for governor and what? kiss babies and stuff like that. I do the opposite. What do you do? I, first of all, you got to get a little of that eggnog, egg, eggnog, you know what I mean? A little of that eggnog, uh, a little of that see? eggnog. That's not fair. And then, and then you, you put a little, you got a little of vodka in it, you know what I mean? And, and you mix it up real nice. You know, you mix it up real nice, you know. Or, or you get that coquito. You got to get the coquito, coquito, coquito. And then me, I like to every year. I watch a Christmas story. Of course. Every year I watch it. At least twice Marathon comes on. Make sure y'all check that. I believe it's on Channel 11. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to debate you on this. You Okay, first of all, the the eggnog and all of that, that's a given. I'm not even going to mention Coquito. that. Because that's hand, a given. Hand, yeah. Everybody does that. That's not nothing special. But I'm going to debate you on what is the better Christmas movie. Or at least holiday-ish movie. You know? Me, like you say Christmas story. Yes. I lean more towards um a movie that never gets old for me and I like um trading places. I okay. like trading places as a holiday movie. Okay. Even though they kinda stretch out past the holidays, you know, but one of the main segments is of emphasizing the holidays. So I call that a holiday movie and I think that that's a movie that never gets old. I like your Christmas story. Right. But I raise you on trading places. That's probably one of the best movies of all time. So that's just me, though. UTF uh, versus Rep City. UTF must have got okay uh, 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 their their wishes for Christmas mm-hmm. because they went out and got the certain players they got. They went out and got a quarterback, Ramsey, one of the top quarterbacks in UFL history. They went out and got two former blockers of the year. They have the reigning blocker the year, Speedy. And they had a guy who won it two about, I think, two seasons ago, mm-hmm. G. So they added that. But you are not getting all of they, the facts correct. Go ahead. All of that is true, but understand that they were up there in the very same year for block of the year. G yeah. won that year, but Speedy was one of the contenders that right. year. And now they are on the same team. The dynamic of that is just ridiculous. And they added Hood, a former most improved player. On this team, they got Pig, a former defensive player of the year. So they got a lot of different pieces on this team. You know, Mike brought this team together. Definitely great job by him. And we got to see if this team can compete. They faced a team that went to the Final Four last year, mm-hmm. but missing the very same quarterback that took them there, which is Hood, who is now with UTF. They were supposed to have Izzy in Rep City. They don't. It doesn't look like he, I don't think Izzy's going to throw in UFL. He's not a UFL fan. We're going to call it what it is. He really doesn't like this league, so I don't see him throwing. That's not going to stop D-Boy or Rel. Them two guys love this league, and they're, they're one step closer to getting to the goal that was their, their thought process when they first got here. Well, my thing is this. Everybody knows in this league, without a quarterback, you're not going to go far. Regardless of what team you have, you need a quarterback. That is the core of your team to survive, let alone win a championship. So this Rep City team, listen, they started off slow before because there was questions last year about even about if Hood is even going to make it. Correct. Remember, last year, Hood was, you know, spotty on his attendance early in the season. Right. So at the end of the day... This team always has struggling problems in the beginning of the season, and ultimately they kind of pick up later on in the year. So it's too early to say if they're in trouble or not, but we got to see from this game if I'm moving forward. Well, we're going to jump right into the game. Beesky's going to get the start. Third down, Beesky with blocking, throws a run and got for a decent gain in the first down. 
Second down, Beatsky on four rush, throws a meet in the middle for a nice game. It's gonna take us to third down. Third down, Beatsky with blocking from B. Dot throws a cell on the gap for a decent game, getting them to the 15 yard line. Last down, Beatsky with blocking. Scrabble throws some meat in the back of the end zone. Incomplete turnover on downs, but if you look here, he could have thrown the ball up to Rell. He missed him. Got to get low the ball. Rell is your star. He missed him. And the thing is, this is a one-on-one -on -one play right here. One-on-one um, -on -one with Rell, that's me. If it's me, I'm throwing it up to Rell. Rather than take a chance and throw it to Meech, here, listen, I'm not taking anything from Meech, but this is not a play that I'm going to throw up and, and hope Meech gets it. Yep. That's Rell's bread and butter. We've seen him do it time and time again. And even in the playoffs, this man was unstoppable. So if you're not throwing it to him on a play like this, what are you doing? So it's not shocking that it ended this way. That's a missed opportunity here for their first drive. Second down, Ramsey, remember, that's the starting quarterback for UCF. Second down, Ramsey on four rush, rolls right, but it's sacked by Vita. Was this a sack? No. <laughs> you didn't even debate it. That was my call. He missed him, but at the end of the day, if you look at it, it's very close. Yeah. So I'm not going to kill me because it of was a close play, but I'm going to kill me because it wasn't a tie. Yeah. But I can make admit when I made a mistake, that is very close, and he got credit for the sack. Third down, Ramsey, blitzed by Steve-O, throws deep to Prodigy, picked off by Rell, but B-Dot is flagged for rushing early, we played it down. B-Dot got a little antsy and kind of got hyped with the sack he got, tried to come a little early, it cost him because they had an interception. And the thing about it is it hurts because you see that he's trying to do his best to rush in. One thing I got to say is I prefer a B-Dot on the offensive end blocking than rushing in. Yeah. I don't think he's as, as effective as a ball, at, at ball giver. So hopefully they have somebody else fill that spot. But as of right now, B. Dot being too eager, he ends up um, rushing early. Next down, Ramsey with blocking from G. Throws deep to Kenny Crawley across the field for a huge game, picking up the first down. If you look here, Reem and Meach are not communicating, leaving them wide, wide open. But if you're right here, I want you to focus on, on Meach right here. Now, right now, Meach is out of position. He won defensive play the year last year. Playing linebacker, not playing safety. He is not a free safety, and you can see it here. If you look here, he gets caught out of position. He's watching Ramsey because Ramsey's a running quarterback. But when you're the safety, you're the last line of defense, and he allows Kenny to get behind him because if you look here, he turns wrong. And one quarterback you cannot do that against is Ramsey. He has one of the strongest arms in the league, makes him pay with a big game here. And the thing about it here is, yes, um, we, we mentioned about the miscommunication, but I can't put this too much on Reeve. Because not at all. Reeve is supposed to guard the shorter guy on the corner, and that's exactly what he did. He saw Hood, he went to pick him up there, and Meech's job is to pick up them. If you're going to play safety, that's your job to decide. I'm going to get the guy running deep from the sideline. He reacts way too late, and Ramsey, notices that mistake and he puts it right there where only Kenny can get it. First and goal, Ramsey finds Hood in the back of the end zone for the touchdown. Hood gets the extra point, 7-zip. And you know Rep City got to be feeling that kind of way because UTF opens up the game with the first score of the season with the guy who took this team to the Final Four last season. Definitely got to hurt the confidence right here. We're going to have to see what happens in the next drive. And, and the thing about this play, um, even though, you know, they, they had a, a touchdown scoring on them, Rep City, whatever, um, I like this sportsmanship right here, this, you know, show of respect. You see Vic giving um, Hood, you know, a hand clap, some props or whatever, um, giving him a pound real quick, you know, former players. Right. There's no hard feelings. You give him some respect, and you move on to the next play. Rep City on the kickoff gets across the 50, four and out. First down, Beesky throws around the gap for a decent game, but Sean curses, which pushes Rep City to the 15 yard line in the red zone. Second down, Beesky is blitzed by Rell with pressure from Sean, throws the B dot in the middle, knocked away by Prodigy. We're gonna get to fourth down. Beesky throws it up, picked off by Trey, giving it back to UCF, and you cannot get in the red zone. And have three shots and not score, especially after you took momentum on a cursed penalty. That's twice there was at the 15 and couldn't score. If you can't move, if you can't move your offense from the spot that's given to you, you're not gonna score. And they did not move and that's why they turned over. After the two short passes, fourth down at the 34 yard, 35 yard line, Ramsey throws it deep to Hood, who beats Reem. Reem is gonna collide with him for the pass interference. The question was, what do you think about the play? No question about it. This was definitely passing the furnace. If you look at this play here, Hood has him beat. Clear as day. There's no way Remus catching him. Hood goes to catch the pass. 
Reed collides with him as Hood is still running for the ball. Correct. That is a definite pass interference. You interfered with that re receiver's line of sight to the ball. And because of that, that the flag is thrown on you. There's nothing to argue about on that. First and goal, I like about the 30 yard line. After a few plays, we're going to get to fourth and goal. Ramsey rolls right, finds Tone in the back of the end zone for the touchdown. If you look here, Rep was in the man. Some guys are rep was in the man. Someone's in the zone. At the end of the day, zone was open. 13 nothing. Taking it to that. And the thing about this play is, if you see um, B dot rushing in, you know he kind of flirted with crossing early on the line there, Again. but he just made it to to four rush before he crossed right. over. But Ramsey was already on the move, rolling out. So there's no way that um, B dot was able to catch him. Ramsey rolls out and then finds Tone cutting in the back of the end zone. Because guys are not staying stationary in their spots, there's open um, open spots wide open. The window's for, um, open, yeah. The windows are wide open, and Ramsey throws it right in there for the touchdown. 39 is going to take us into the half. If I'm Rep City, first of all, we got to get Meech to his original position. He is not, not a safety. That's not what he does. So he's playing bad because he's playing out of position. Offensively, we got to get Rel the ball. There is nobody on this UTF defense that can guard Rel. Rel is a star. They have to find a way to get him the ball. If not, we're looking at a blowout. And what can I say wrong about UTF right now? Because they haven't done anything wrong in this game. Everything that they have done has been effective, especially the offense. Picking apart their arm, the Rep City defense, it seems like they are pretty much dead to rights right now. Um, Ramsey, one thing that's shocking is Ramsey is a downfield guy. Correct. And the fact that he's chopping up the ball, um, chopping up the field, taking on um, what the defense is giving him, driving down the field, and it's effective, and they were able to score twice because of it, that says something. If Ramsey's able to solidify this type of game and still have his downfield throw... Which we saw him throw one to Kenny and go to Hood that got passed in the first If yep. that's the case, then a lot of teams are in, are in trouble. One thing I can say is, right now, they're looking like they're in rhythm. If they keep going like this, they're definitely in for a win. UTF going to get the ball in the second half. Ramsey with blocking from G and Speedy. Runs for a nice game in the, in the first down. Team's going to have to adjust to this because you got Speedy and, and G, two of the top blockers in the league on the same team. And the difference is G can go out and catch the football. Speedy can't, but G can't. So not only do you got to watch these guys blocking, you got to watch G releasing. And then you got to watch him being able to move and run block with Ramsey running. Yeah. Speedy is more of a pass block guy. He's a guy that's going to buy you time. But he's not a run block guy. That's what G does. He's a top run block guy, meaning he can move with Ramsey in the run. Great blocking there by G. Ramsey with blocking for Speedy, throws it off in the gap. That's going to drop. Second down, Speedy blocking B dot. Ramsey throws the hood in the middle for a nice game, getting to the 10-yard line, and Ramsey likes Hood. He's getting him the ball, one quarterback to another. Hood is a quarterback, so he knows what window Ramsey needs in order for him to be in to get him the ball, and they don't see him right now. Third down, Ramsey rolls left on four rush, throws a project in the front of the end zone, pass blocked by Rowe, incomplete. That's what Rowe has to do. Great play by Rowe. Fourth down, Ramsey on four rush, scrambles. Those are the speed in the gap, off target, turnover on downs. Now, first of all, speed is on the receiver. Yeah. So that's great defense, and Ramsey with a poor judgment to try to get him the ball. But you got to look at this, though. With this whole play, understand that Ramsey was an un was under pressure on this. Yep. This is them bringing the rush to Ramsey. Ramsey had nowhere to go because they closed the gap from Ramsey. Ramsey had no choice but to throw off his back foot for the desperate receiver, which was speedy, no chance. That's Rep City finally stepping up and playing some defense. They go in the second half. Tess is going to get the, the job. He's throwing now. Beastie sits down. Tess, one with three short passes for a decent game to get him to the 40 yard line. Fourth down, Tess drops back, throws the B dot in the gap. Almost picked off by Rell. Turnover on downs. If you look here, Tess could have ran in the gap. That's a great play by Rell, UTF's Rell. He's a guy that played with Riot Squad before. He is a kind of, he was undersized before. He has the size, size now, has limited speed, but his size takes up a lot of space and he's able to react to the ball because he used to play offense also, makes a great play here and knocks the ball down. And effective defense right here with him reading that 
B-Dot was going to be the go-to target for this play here. He goes and tries to cut it off. Almost gets the interception. Yep. It seems like he saw daylight when he grabbed the ball, but he couldn't hold on to it. But that's still good defense. Tess has to make a better yes, decision yep. on this play. He had the whole right side to run. I would take my chances and run and try to get the first down rather than throw this ball because this was almost picked off and it led to a turnover. Ramsey with two passes to Tone in the gap to get them to the 10-yard line. Third down, Ramsey blitzed by Meach, rolls right, finds Kenny cutting in the middle of the end zone. But a touchdown. G gets the extra point, 20 and nothing. And look at this play. Meach is going to um, blitz in. You're going to have Kenny. Burrell looks like he passes them off to Tess. Look right here, Tessa Pete. He's beat already. He reacted already. But if you look to this side, who's Sonny on? Sonny could have came and gave some help. Sonny did not know he's out on the field. Sonny is not a defensive player. And Ramsey makes them pay 20 to nothing. UTF and Ramsey especially is taking advantage of this defensive um, team right now. They have no game plan, they have no strategy, and there's guys out there that are, are, are pretty much targets to go at, and Ramsey's taking advantage. He sees Tess and he sees Sonny not in proper position. He sees Tess step up. Right then he knows that um, Kenny has him beat, and he makes an a, a, a easy pass right to him for the touchdown. Tess throws the rail open in the middle for a nice game, picking up the first down. Then Tess throws the B-Dot in the middle, knocked away by Kenny, incomplete. Third down, Tess is blitzed by Rowe, runs in the gap for a short game. Last down, Tess on fourth down, throws it up, picked off by Trey. Trey second into of the game, end of the game, UTF with the win, 20 to nothing. And which do I say is, is the better headline of this story? That UTF was lights out in this game or Rep City? had their lights knocked out in this game. I don't know which will be a better headline for this story because both are accurate. UTF did everything right. Ramsey chopping up the field, picking apart this defense. Um, UTF keeping their offense out of sync. Um, Rep City's D uh, offense out of sync. Everybody stepped up in this game. Everybody did a little something. Um, just a little formula that they're showing that, that they're going to show against other teams. This, this team is looking promising right now. Rep City has a lot of issues right now. Just from this first game, they have always started slow in this UFL league, but this is not the start that I've ever seen um, Rep City starting. Not this bad. I don't know what's going on with this team right now. We're going to go to the interviews real quick, and then we'll be back. What's going on? Stephen J here with the UTF team. They just beat Rep City 20 to nothing. G, let me talk to you for a minute real quick. You went out and picked up a lot of pieces. You and Mike, Ramsey. You went out and got um, Prodigy, Trey. What was the point of picking up these type of players? Is you know, you, you out there, you see guys that ball, you see talent, you go out there, you pick them up. Ask them they want to play. They say, yeah, come down. UTF a family, bro. Don't let the name fool you. This is a brand. UTF, Uptown Finest. That's everybody from Uptown. Anybody could be. Everybody's Uptown Finest. This is a brand right here. When I, people come play, I ask you, yo, you want to play? You play the kindness of your heart. You give me a hundred, I give you a hundred. That's all I come out here and do. I thank those guys for coming. Welcome them. And you already know, man. Thank Mike, you. What, really what made you decide to bring the team here? A lot of teams, a lot of people say UTF is known picking up different players, but borrow players. But you seem like you have a team here. What was the decision of bringing the team into UFL? I mean, I always wanted to come to UT, um, UFL and play. I mean, always. But, you know, I just I, I had to build my team first. And finally, I got a team. You know what I'm saying? So now my team is going to go everywhere. I mean, UFL, I started here. Today I was thinking, I was like, I started here with a house gang, throwing, and ball so hard. Throwing, getting smoked out here. And now, you know, I, brought my, I made my own team, brought my team out here. You know, and now we're here to play. Ramsey. What's up, bro? Yeah. You, you was a you was a you was a huge pickup. I call I love to call you the Brett Farr with speed. Why was UTF your decision? You had a lot of teams you could have went to. Why was it UTF for you? Well, Mike has been scouting me for like five years now, and uh, he's been giving me the good talent around me. So I look for the best team that could help me win. And the team got blockers, got playmakers, got defense. You give me a defense, I'll do my best to win the league. Hood, hood, hood. Hood, hood, hood. You just came off last season taking this team you played with, Rep City, to the Final Four. 
Now we see you playing receiver for UTF. What's all that about? I mean, I don't know. It ain't, it ain't really nothing about it. Like, I just, it just ain't working. I don't know. I just, I don't know. It's deeper than football, you know? So it's like, I, the loving I'm never going to love is there, you know what I mean? Just, it's just, Mike is my guy, you know what I mean? Like, he put his son together, you know what I'm saying? He, he, he ride for me, I gotta ride for him, you know what I'm saying? Like, so, that's it. it. Is it bittersweet? Because we seen you kill today. But right now, I can see in your eyes, you feeling some emotions that you was a the guy, you helped this team beat your guys that you called family. What are you feeling right now? Now, you know what it is? Because I'm not a cold-hearted person, I mean? Like, I got a heart at the end of the day. Like, I'm going to twist it, like, you know what I mean? I want to talk, my, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's all I want. I just wanted to win. Whether I performed or I didn't, you know what I'm saying? Like, but... It's not that serious for me to, you know what I'm saying, bash my brothers, you know what I'm saying, over there, you know what I mean? Like, so I just came to play my game, you know what I'm saying? That's it. We're going to thank her for being here with us. UTF, first game of the season, but they showed something. They showed they real. So they definitely seem to worry about. Got a good defense, got a great quarterback, good core, good management. We're just going to have to see where they take themselves. See you on the side, guys. Thanks, brother. Stephen Jay here with. D boy, Rep City, just lost 20 to nothing. We see y'all go through this all the time. Issue at the quarterback. I respect Tess. I respect Bisky. But that's not the quarterback that's going to get y'all to the next level. You had to know coming in, you was going to need a starting quarterback. And y'all seem like playing musical chairs today. What's going on with that? It's all right. First game of the season, man. People ain't show up. And we knew this was going to happen. We already spoke about it. We're going to weather the storm, and we'll be back. We're going to play every week. It ain't going to be like this. So shout outs to UTF. They balled out. But we all know towards the playoffs or towards the middle of the season, we know who clicks. So I have a big, how you want it. The big question, though, your team didn't have a quarterback. The quarterback that took you to the Final Four last year was on the other team playing receiver. What's going on with that? No comment. <laughs> no comment. No comment. No comment. Um, next question. He seemed to be emotional talking about your team. Said it's always love. Always got love for y'all guys. But it's just not working out. You don't want to elaborate? Tell us what he's talking about. No comment. What's going on in the future with this team right now? You had some decent sparks. But y'all always seem to start off slow. Do you think you could do that every season and be able to step it up in the middle of the season? We technically don't want to do that. But if that's how the cards are, that's how they are. But like I said, first game of the week. We came flat, but just know we're not going to be like that every week, so it don't matter. Next week, if it's Tess, if it's me, just know we coming to ball. So, Who's the starting quarterback for Rep City? Test that man right there. He'll be till further notice. So that's your starting quarterback? That's my starting quarterback, and that's how we rocking with. That's it. All right. We're going to thank him for being here with us. Rep with a disappointing loss, 20 to nothing. Going to see if they can be able to turn it around. See you next Thanks, week. Brother. Before I talk about Rep City, um, we're going to talk about UTF, Hood and UTF. Mm -hmm. Hood seem emotional. Yeah. Something happened within this team that Hood isn't playing with them anymore. Something's going on. Um, I understand why he would go to UTF. He's more familiar with those guys. So if there's any other team he would go to, it would be them. Heard there was rumors that he was going to throw for Team X. But as you see, that didn't happen. Um, he played great. Got to get a man his his his, his props. Um, his he caught he had a big pass interference that they got on him. Um, after he got open down for he had a touchdown. He had extra point. So it was bittersweet on what he did. But he, on the other hand, he's feeling the fact that his team is going through this because he's not there. He abandoned them. Mm -hmm. Regardless of what you're gonna call it, whatever whatever reasons you want to give. He abandoned the team. That's how they're looking at it. Mm -hmm. Only he and D-Boy knows what's really going on, as, as well as other players. But they felt like he abandoned them. And you heard that with the difference in their interviews. Yeah. Hood is more emotional. Yeah. D-Boy didn't even want to answer the question about him. Mm -hmm. um, Rep City did not look like the team we expected them to be. Mm -hmm. Not gonna sleep on them because they do this every year. Yeah. But the East is a little stronger. 99 is strong. LD is already strong. YMM just lost the chip in EHS and they just lost the Final Four in City Island. 
this team is focused. So they're coming in um, looking to make noise. Um, those are the, some of the top teams. You have the Browns. Jingo always finds a way, always finds a way to put something together. So you can never, never sleep on that team. Mm -hmm. And then you got the Wolverines who just picked up Ralph mm -hmm. from YMM. Mm. Ralph who guided a young YMM to the championship and lost to NVR. Mm -hmm. But that was three teams in one. Yeah. So you can't sleep on the Wolverines. The difference is, out of all these teams, if you look at the screen, all their quarterbacks, I put Tess at the bottom of the line of all their quarterbacks because Tess has not been consistent enough. But, but So if he's their starter... It's funny because, again, yes, if he's their starter, I, it, there's, there's nothing that, that a, a defense would fear about Tess, in my opinion. Because, like you said, he's very inconsistent. But my thing is, they have three spotty quarterbacks on his team. Because we're forgetting that Sonny is also a quarterback. Yes. I don't know why he was playing defense. I think that he's better at quarterback than defense. But my thing is this. If, go ahead, go ahead. Like, no, sorry. no, you, you, you go ahead. If you're going to go with Tess, Tess has to just stay quarterback. Yes. He cannot play, he cannot play both ways. Yes. If he's going to be a starter, you have to be your starter quarterback. Because right now, like I said, you got the defending champs, IOD. Adi, won the quarterback of the year, coming off a championship. Corey, one of the best quarterbacks in this division, arguably, with YMM. Reggie, just came off winning quarterback of the year, 24 touchdown passes last year. 99. Now, we don't know what's going on with, we, 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 we hear Shannon's a starter. I don't know what's going on with Casey. But at the end of the day, I think if you go with Casey, he has the experience. He took 99 to a chip. Yeah. If you go with Shannon, he has the feet. Speed to get him out of trouble. Ramsey, we see the numbers he's putting up before. Mm -hmm. He's already in the second tier of quarterbacks at UFL, and Ralph took Wyman to a championship. Yeah. At the end of the day, Tess is the only quarterback in this division with the least experience. Yeah. So if you're going to start him, he has to be your starter. You cannot put him on defense. You cannot put him on special teams. He has to focus on being a quarterback. And the other thing is, Rell has to be the star. Rell has to be LeBron James of Rep City. He has to be involved in the defense. He has to be involved in the offense. He has to find a way to get the ball. This season, Rell has to go from star to superstar. He has to go to the next level. If not, Rep City is not getting out of the first round. Other guys got to step up. Meech cannot play safety. You're wasting his abilities. That's not what he does. B. Dot cannot be your ball giver. It's a waste of spot. B. Dot is an offensive blocker, and at times he can go out as a receiver. This team needs all hands on deck. D. Boy, the most passionate player in the league, needs to play like he talks. He needs to lead the troops because at the end of the day, he said it's all him and Ralph. Well, he's the energy on the field. Sometimes talking with no action is just talking. Mm. They need to play. They were in the final four last year. One step away from an, um, one six one up versus the defending champs, who wasn't the champs at the time, at halftime. They need to fix this. I like this UCF team. A few little issues. One, Ak was in here. Ak plays the middle. Rel plays the middle. Pick plays the middle. I don't know how they're going to work that out, but they don't have a lot of speed over the middle. That's one. They got to fix that. Two, one of the positives they have is I like Tone and Kenny. They're going to kill because of their size. With JP playing in the middle, that's going to help offensively. Mm -hmm. yeah. They need somebody that can stretch the field. They need somebody that other teams will worry about. It can't be Hood. Hood got open today. But when you play the better teams, a team that with a great secondary, similar to 99 Problems, mm -hmm. YMM, ILD, Deep teams that play defense, Jingo always have the Browns playing defense. You got to have somebody that worries the other team. And we didn't see anybody today that can spread the field. They need somebody that got size and can go downfield and make plays. Maybe they need to go after B-Boy, mm -hmm. who just quick, never scared. 
Mm. Because he's the guy that can open up the field going downfield. We'll see. We did also see Ramsey. If you look at that play on fourth down, he threw the bomb the hood. Mm-hmm. It was a pass interference, but it was fourth down and he threw a bomb the hood. Mm-hmm. That's a little of that old Ramsey creeping in. Mm-hmm. He took a chance for a bomb on fourth down when he needed a first. That's I mean, a little I, bit of the old Ramsey you know kicking what? in, and I, you got to be careful. But it's that. hard for me to say that I didn't like that play because Hood had him beat. So most quarterbacks, if you have... Is that a high percentage play? The fact that the, the, the Is defense... that a high percentage play? You know, the further you go downfield, the more the percentage goes down. Fine. So do you think... But, but my thing is this. Obviously, you know the answer to that. Okay. But... Are you shocked that Ramsey no. threw that throw? No. So they got to be prepared for this. And like I said, what makes you laugh makes you cry. But look so at they got to understand about that. But my thing is this. If you're going to make that throw, make that throw. And Ramsey, when you... Now, it's a difference. If you're forcing a throw to one guy when he has three guys on him, that's different. But if your guy is beat one-on-one... I know I don't mind taking that shot, especially if you're not respecting the defense you're facing. Well, so it depends on the team that they're facing. We're gonna have to see what happens. Um, we're gonna wrap it up. First show. Hopefully, I liked it. We had a good time putting it together, and it's gonna be a great season. Got a lot of other teams playing next this week. Got a lot of new teams playing next week. That's gonna open up. So mm-hmm. at the end of the day, it's time to ball out, man. Yep. Hopefully, I liked it. The podcast should be up coming. Um, you can go. Like I said, we'll put a topic up. And then you'll have an opportunity to hit the show up and debate me on that topic. I'll give you a day to do your research, check what you want to check, and come with me. If you beat me and you get voted to beat me, which I don't usually lose, we'll probably give, be able to reach out to you and give you a, a real tough talk t-shirt or something you like that. You will be giving that to everybody then. I destroy ghosts. Please. All the time. So make sure you're ready when you battle me. But at the end of the day, we want to wish everybody a very happy and blessed Christmas. Definitely a good time. Hope you enjoyed the intro. And um, that's what it is. I'll be watching um, Christmas Story, drinking my um, Coquito. <laughs> so on behalf of on Real Tough Talk, on behalf of Stephen J, my partner Ghost, we're out of here. We'll see you on the next episode of Real Tough Talk. We out.